Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing one of the most impressive dive watches I've encountered in a while. This is the 2015 redesign of the Ball Skin Diver. Technically, and it has a grandiose name, the Ball Engineer Master 2 Skin Diver. 43 millimeters in stainless steel. This watch wears like a smaller timepiece on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It is imposing, it is impressive, and it is very solid, but it does fit well for a large timepiece. 43 millimeters in diameter, 14.4 millimeters thick. The timepiece spreads lug to lug, and lug to lug is the true dimension, 53.6 millimeters. The spacing between the lugs, a nice broad, modern, and planted 22 millimeters. You can fit a strap, but I like the bracelet better than any possible strap option. Let's take a quick look here because I'm impressed as much by the bracelet and the clasp as by any other feature of the watch. The first thing you'll note is that it features many small individual links. It's silken. It's almost like a piece of textile. It's almost like a Milanese dress watch bracelet on a dive watch. You can see that the individual links are quite small and there are many gaps. It's almost like a mesh on the underside to release heat, sweat, moisture, grit from the wrist. There are many individual screw fix removable links. So the links being this small and this numerous, you will be able to get a precise fit by removing each tiny link in turn until it's perfectly dialed in. That said, you still have three different anchoring points inside the clasp so you can fine tune. You've also got a pull out extension system. So it's got an all or nothing extension for use over a dive suit, dry, wet, or just a thick winter coat. What appears at first glance to be a stamped clasp actually feels in the hand more like a milled clasp. It's very impressive in its solidity. There's a lot of material here and you can see that it's even thoughtfully designed with a handsome ball logo, a nice interlock of clamshell and clasp, and then there's a handsome beveling along the side. So it's been thoughtfully designed. It's a good looking clasp and it's very solid. So I'm impressed by the bracelet and the clasp. You can see that there's an interesting double knurling. There are deep trenches and then long rows of a sort of pyramid hobnail with a no guard profile to make the crown easy to use when your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. There are no guards blocking your access. The knurling is deep and sharp so you'll have no trouble getting your fingers into it. The case is simple and strong. It's a bit of a hybrid design. It's got a little bit of Rolex oyster to it in that it's somewhat between a cushion case and a traditional round case design. Satin finish, which interestingly is a sort of circular concentric satin finish that runs around the, be the bezel on the top of the lugs. Then you've got a longitudinal, let's get a little bit closer, you've got a longitudinal satin finish on the side with a helium escape valve for you saturation divers, a feature you have to upgrade to a Rolex Sea Dweller to own if you're in the Rolex catalog. You get it standard here on the Skin Diver 2. There's a handsome and broad polished bevel and you can see that the lug ends themselves are actually nicely tapered and fairly artful. The timepiece features the same deep pyramid style knurling on the bezel with triple rows that you'll find on the edge of the crown. So the bezel itself is easy to grip. Moving out for a moment, you can see that the bezel is large, broad, and gives a wonderfully easy grip with gloved, sweaty, or wet hands. And listen to this detent. as crisp as a rifle bolt. Crisp indeed. It sounds it, it feels it, and I have to say it's one of the most positive feeling bezels I have ever encountered. It's right up there with my industry standard, the Doxa subs and the Panerai Luminor submersibles. So a good feel, a good sound. Ceramic insert and fully loomed. That's right, the insert itself is highly scratch resistant ceramic, but it's also loomed. Now you get a little bit closer and you can see that there's a different kind of loom on the dial. There are 15 pretty trazors, that is glass capsules that enclose a phosphorescent gas and tritium to activate it. So you can see a handsome steep rayhot sloping down from the bezel, a matte finish to reduce glare, and then you've got high contrast colors, lime, white, and signal orange on the black base for easy viewing. You've got your date window with a nice stepped progressive aperture sloping down from the dial to the date disc. You can see it is a chronometer, is 500 feet, 1600, well I should say 500 meters, 1,650 feet water resistant. The previous skin diver was 300 meters, so an upgrade right there. The movement, which is a ETA 28242, 
4 hertz beat rate, that's 28,800 vibrations per hour, stop seconds, as well as a quick set date feature. It features a COSC chronometer certification, so my one objection with a lot of watches from for example, Tudor before the in-house calibers and Oris right now is that you don't know what grade of Solita or ETA caliber you're getting. Here you know exactly what you're getting. The highest grade, chronometer certified, five position adjusted, 25 joules beaten away at four hertz underneath a case pack that pays tribute to the United States Coast Guard Reserve and while Ball does have a background as an American manufacturer and the skin diver was occasionally adopted during its first run during the 1960s by US servicemen, this does seem to be a crest that deserves a little bit more explanation from Ball, which offers precious little clarification as to why the Coast Guard Reserve specifically was commemorated on the case back of this diver. That said, I like it. It's interesting, it's offbeat, and we don't need another tribute to Navy SEALs. Those guys get all the glory anyway. The timepiece fully self-activating on its dial. I should have mentioned that the tritium tracers do not require light to activate. They will activate for roughly 18 years and then Ball will swap them out after about one and a half half-lives. So you get a wonderful self-activating light that can sit in your dive locker or your duffel bag. You can pull it out in the middle of the night and it glows true. See this impressively specced chronometer diver and make it yours on the watch box. Okay, we're back with the Ball Skin Diver 2. You can see the bezel itself is super luminova, but the dial is self-activating tritium tracers. You have to adjust your night vision, but once you do, you can see both quite easily.